Now that we know what a physics engine is, let's take a look at how we get started using Havoc as your physics engine. You may recognize this demo, simple.cpp, from the previous video on the demo framework. Please refer to that video for instructions on how to set up this demo. HKP World is the main Havoc class for holding information about your physics world. It is used for both simulation and asynchronous queries. It is a container for rigid bodies, constraints, trigger volumes, and more. As with many objects in Havoc, you create an HKP world from a C info object. So let's take a look at some of the parameters available to us in HKP world C info. There are many parameters, I'm just going to highlight a few here. First, let's take a look at the solver type. This solver type is a convenience enum for setting up several parameters relating to how the Havoc constraint solver behaves. As I mentioned before, one of the variables you can tweak inside Havoc is how many iterations the solver will take when trying to resolve constraints. This is the msolverIterations variable. It is represented as the number of iters in the enum, so for instance two iters or four iters. The other parameters are a bit more complicated and deal with how aggressively the solver will try and correct current error in the system versus predicted error. For most use cases, the default of four iters medium provides a nice balance between constraint stiffness, CPU load, and stability. Next, let's look at the simulation type. This setting defines what kind of simulation Havoc will use to integrate and collide bodies. Setting the simulation type changes the capability of the Havoc simulation. For instance, setting the simulation to continuous or multi-threaded will allow rigid bodies to generate TOIs, although there are many factors that actually dictate if TOIs are created, and we will talk about them in length in later videos. And of course, there's also gravity. Most people find that a value slightly greater than the normal gravity looks good. I recommend a gravity of magnitude 11 for a typical game feel. Broadface World AABB is used to set the extents of your physics world. Objects in your physics world should always remain inside the box defined by this parameter. Additionally, this box should be as small as possible to increase the accuracy of AABBs in the system. If worlds are very large, a shifting broad phase can be used. Now let's take a look at the HKP world itself. As I mentioned, this is essentially a container for all your physics related objects. You'll notice a series of add remove functions as well as add remove batch functions. Generally speaking, add remove batch are quicker function calls for sets of seven or more objects at a time. Here we have entities. Entities are synonymous with rigid bodies. In fact, HKP rigid body is the only descendant of HKP entity. So in Havoc, these two classes are effectively interchangeable. So here's how you add your rigid bodies to the world. You can add user constraints to the world here. Havoc has many constraint types such as ball and socket, hinge, ragdoll, and many more. Havoc also supports actions. Actions are simply objects which are allowed to affect one or more rigid bodies at the beginning of the Havoc step. The Havoc SDK ships with many example actions, including buoyancy action, wind action, and many others. And here you can add phantoms. Phantoms only exist in the broad phase. There are a number of phantom variants, but they all operate upon objects which overlap with them during broad phase collision detection. And here we have physics systems. Physics systems are a nifty way of bundling up a set of the above objects into an organizational container. People will often group their ragdolls into physics systems that can then easily be cloned, added, removed from the Havoc world. Havoc also provides a fixed rigid body for attaching constraints to. This is good for attaching a rigid body to an arbitrary point in world space. Havoc makes heavy use of listeners. This is just a small subset which can be set at the world level. If there's a callback you want to receive during the Havoc simulation, chances are it's available through a listener. You can also perform asynchronous queries through the HKP world. So here you can see ray casting, linear casting, get closest points, and get penetrations. There are many demos which demonstrate on how to use these things. Finally, the HKP world needs to be stepped in order to integrate bodies forward and perform collision detection. There are, of course, single-threaded and multi-threaded variants of these calls. Additionally, you can break down the step into its subcomponents. This is useful for interleaving Havoc work with game work in multi-threaded environments.
So let's go back and look at our demo. Here we set up the world with a hundred meters cubed area and a reasonable solver type. We then lock the world. HKP world provides several methods useful for multi-threaded environments. Lock uses a critical section to lock the world for read and write access from the calling thread. Another thread who calls lock on the world would, therefore, block until we call unlock. If your program has its own mechanisms for locking between threads, mark for write, mark for read, unmark for write, and unmark for read should be used instead. These mark functions simply throw asserts in debug when bad multithread access occurs, but don't incur the overhead of doing a full lock. We then register collision agents. There will be more discussion about what collision agents are in later videos. Suffice it to say, collision agents need to be registered so that Havoc knows how to handle collisions between various shape types. Without this call, no collisions will occur in your physics world. So let's take a look at this demo. You'll notice that I replaced the box landscape with a triangulated landscape. I also wrapped this triangulated landscape in a mop shape. That's how Havoc gets the optimized mid-phase I mentioned in the last video. I'm now going to drop a box on this landscape and take a look at it in the visual debugger. I've turned on several viewers that I think will be helpful in this discussion. One of the viewers is the broad phase viewer. The broad phase viewer draws red boxes around everything that's represented in the broad phase. You'll notice a huge red box. That's the world's broad phase borders. You'll also notice that the landscape and the box are wrapped in a red box as well. These are those bodies AABBs. I've also enabled the debug display. The debug display allows users to add code to their game, which will draw arbitrary geometry or lines in the visual debugger. I've used those, that code to draw the triangles that get pulled out of the mop when the objects collide. This helps illustrate the points we discussed earlier between the broad phase and mid phase collision detection algorithms. As you can see, if I pick up this box and lift it up, when the red boxes of these objects are not overlapping, I don't get any triangles out of the mop. As soon as they overlap, I will start to get triangles in the mop. These are any triangles which overlap with the AABB of the box. As I continue to fall, more triangles get pulled out of the mop. This is how we do optimize mid-phase collision. Each triangle in the landscape is not tested against the box. Only the triangles pulled from querying the ABB in the mop are actually tested. I hope this presentation has offered a high-level view of what physics engines are and how Havoc collision detection and simulation works.